Hello, I'm Mark Mitchell, and as you're reading chapter one, I just wanted you to keep in mind certain topics that are, are very important for the chapter. And so um, let's talk about some of those things right now. Of course, uh, it is sociology in chapter one. And uh, here you can see on this slide, it just addresses several topics that are, are very important. They're, they're really the things you should take away from the chapter after reading it. And this is a good indicator, I think, of making sure that you know uh, what's important, especially when it comes quiz or exam time. So you do need to know, you know, what is sociology, and that's uh, precise, being more precise, a definition. We're going to look at theories uh, in sociology, how sociology developed as a science, uh, major theoretical perspectives. Uh, this point right here uh, will continue to follow us throughout the course, but there are uh, major theories that sociologists have developed that are going to be very useful in explaining what we see in society. All right, and practical side of sociology, that's taking it with you, and then careers in sociology is, is also something mentioned. Uh, the definition of sociology, that really sets the tone for the whole course there, and we, we can see the slide, the definition there. Uh, make sure you, you look over that and uh, able to remember it. We see, for example, another important topic is the sociological imagination and, and C. Wright Mills. Uh, he is credited with uh, coming up with that term or coining it. Uh, but it is this awareness uh, of an individual and their relationship there to the wider society. Uh, it comes into play when we try to describe what is going on. and. Uh, this is that new way of looking at things. The new perspective uh, is a good way to also think of this term. Uh, but remember that name, C. Wright Mills. We'll find that there are many names, especially here in Chapter 1, that are, they are pioneers in sociology, and we need to remember their contribution. He's the first of many. Uh, we also see, for example, <clears throat> that sociology is based on science and uh, there's a distinction there between the natural sciences, uh, think of biology, chemistry, and physics there, as compared to social sciences like sociology or psychology there. Both of them will emphasize uh, this body of knowledge obtained by systematic observation. And we think of the scientific method, for example, is how we're going to carry out uh, these processes. We also uh, see that uh, no matter what type of science, natural or social, it is based on empirical, uh, the empir empirical nature there, that everything we look at needs to be available to the senses. Uh, and that is also a very important point uh, to remember. Uh, we also, uh, for example, do this to uh, not uh, be affected by you know what appears to be common sense or everybody knows that you know these things often aren't as clear as uh, we think they are and so a scientific method and uh, the use of empiricism helps us to get away uh, from things like this from the realm of the subjective to the realm of the objective and that's uh, what science uh, tries to do uh, when we think of theory there, uh, it is, for example, an idea uh, that seeks to explain behavior or what we see in the world. Uh, it is a what if. It's, it's not experimental as compared to a hypothesis which does uh, begin our experiment and, and thus our, our scientific method that we want to follow. Now, some of the early thinkers there in sociology, the, the fathers, for example, or the pioneers, uh, who are very important in, in beginning sociology as a science would include uh, the individuals listed here, uh, August Comte, and he is considered the founder or father of sociology. He came up with the term sociology. Harriet Martineau is another individual there. Uh, she worked and. Uh, in many situations here in the U.S. Uh, about problems that affected gender. So we see a wide uh, array of people who work to identify problems and the times they live and wanted to understand how society operated and just how things came to be how they are. Uh, Emil 
Emil Durkheim is another uh, sociologist who's very important. Uh, he is uh, known for a suicide study that looked at how and why uh, people commit suicide. Uh, some groups completed this activity uh, more often than others, and uh, the findings that he revealed uh, are pretty much accurate today. They hold up if we were to repeat the study because he really got at the answer. Max Weber is also very important in terms of meaning uh, the symbolic interaction paradigm. You will see his name there. Uh, he is German. Uh, he mentions here on the slide Verstehen, and that is his idea of understanding, which uh, is also really what's going on in sociology as a discipline. We want to understand why things are the way they are. Uh, Karl Marx is representative of the social conflict paradigm, and that is a big influence in our book. And really, uh, what that says is there are two groups in society, the ones who have, or the rich, and the ones who don't, or the have-nots, or the poor. And so, whatever two groups you want to look at, they're in conflict, and it's over valued resources. It's not so much that they just can't get along, but it's over uh, material, finite resources that one has and wants to keep and the other desires and, and wants to get their fair share. But think of Karl Marx uh, when, you, when you think of that. W.E.B. Du Bois is also uh, influential in sociology because uh, one of his main focuses was uh, the imbalances in society, uh, think conflict there that went on because of race. And so he was an African American that uh, really did not see a lot of change in his life, although uh, he did have substantial educational accomplishments, but uh, th they just were not recognized along with women. There were many who studied and uh, they just did not receive really the rewards uh, for their labors as we think of them today. Uh, we also, uh, there, there's many names and, and here are some more, but they are uh, more representative some of, of theories. Uh, Charles Horton Cooley, for example, and George Herbert Mee. Uh, Jane Addams is more of a pioneer like Du Bois and Martinow in terms of uh, helping the underprivileged uh, during her lifetime. Also, uh, we've mentioned the three big perspectives. Uh, we, we'll never get away from those, but they are uh, the structural functionalist perspective, the conflict, social conflict perspective, and the symbolic interaction. That's what we mean by the, the big three. Uh, excuse me, let me um, continue on. I'm moving down. Uh, and so here are some of the basic points to keep in mind. Uh, the, the chart I'm referencing here is in our extra study resources. It's available to you at any time. Uh, feel free to use them. Uh, but here's more of the conflict perspective, which also incorporates a view of gender and a view of race. So the, the feminist view is a, a sub-theory under Karl Marx and the conflict uh, perspective. The interactionist perspective looks at meaning in society uh, or symbolic interaction paradigm. And so there's George Herbert Mead. I mentioned him earlier. Uh, he is very uh, influential in this perspective, considered the founder. Did a lot of work there on uh, how we develop a sense of self along with Charles uh, Cooley. Irving Goffman uh, looked at a lot of uh, symbolic interaction in terms of what we see day in and day out. Uh, he really perceived people as actors on a stage, and so that's his concept of dramaturgical approach. We all have a role to play, whether it's a student uh, at school or at home, uh, being a parent. Uh, we have roles just like actors, and we're very adept at, at learning what to do. That's an interesting idea of everyday life, and uh, he, he is correct, in my opinion, there about uh, the roles we play. Now, we always uh, see there the, the overriding uh, theme there in sociology is uh, just really to gain a better understanding of our society, of why groups of people do the things that they do, the influences that they have on one another. And uh, so we, we also talk about tradition when, when we look at uh, how we're influenced. And uh, so 
also something to keep in mind when you're reading the chapter there. My perspective is one thing, but what about uh, others? We're constantly uh, giving and taking, and this influence occurs throughout our lifetime from the time that we are born until our, our old age. And the whole point of sociology there, uh, applied, is how we take it and live richer, fuller, better lives. We take the research that we learn from, and how can we help others with it? Clinical sociology is really uh, in the same regard, except on a, a smaller uh, level. Maybe think of applied as a macro level and clinical as a micro level there. It's all geared toward helping people. And this is true not only of sociology, but yeah. uh, psychology as well, and, and just many other disciplines. Uh, we take what we know and, and try to improve the quality of life for people. And that's just the distinction uh, that's being made here. Uh, also, uh, you know, how do we develop a sociological imagination? Is we have to really see it through uh, rose-colored glasses or in another person's shoes. That's how we uh, see the world a little bit differently. And uh, once we do that, we can understand others better and change uh, interaction. Uh, lead to different policy changes and address social problems, you know, on a wider scale. And then finally there, uh, as far as careers in sociology, um, we find really a couple things that I would uh, suggest. Uh, there's a wide uh, array of careers that one could use, but the more education you have in a field such as sociology or psychology, the better off you're going to be. So what I mean by that is, you know, just don't stop at a uh, four-year degree. Uh, if you can go further, it would really be to your advantage to do so, uh, rather than just an entry-level position with a four-year degree. Uh, you can do many more or have many more opportunities with a, a uh, master's degree or a PhD. And that does require the, you know, the time and financial investment. Uh, but I don't think uh, you would regret that, and especially if you find that sociology or you know psychology or whatever the discipline is is really uh, your particular or has your particular interest level uh, peaked. This graph right here just shows us that sociology, and it's true for other disciplines as well, is that you know most of the people who receive degrees are in fact women. So. The graph before us just shows that uh, from the latest data point, 70% of those who got degrees uh, were women. So more than two out of three and approximately three out of four. So it is a good field there uh, for women, but keep in mind that you, you do need more than a, a, a bachelor's degree. And then you can see uh, from this pie chart, figure one three, is uh, where the sociology majors wind up. And so uh, we have a, a good graph there, and most of them in some sort of social services sector. Uh, of course, you know, it's a, a wide area. Uh, teaching and education is represented in our graph. Uh, sales uh, is important. Uh, we can see that as well. But just a wide uh, variety of options available to uh, the sociology degree holder. These are just some comments that I, I wanted to draw your attention regarding Chapter 1, and I uh, hope they're beneficial to you, and I will see you next time.